Yo, dude, come in here for a minute. Yeah, what's up? You hear that? Huh. Sounds like something's leaking. What is it? I don't know. Check the fridge. Not the fridge. Sink. Not the sink either. Hmm. Wait a sec. Sounds like it's coming from... What? What are you doing? Shh. Just, just chill out. Stay right there. I'm, I'm just gonna have a little peek. All right? What? No way! Come on. You, humor me. It's, it, it's probably nothing. You're good. This is ridiculous. Fine. I don't, I don't, I don't know why I even put up with this. Ex exactly. Exactly. You're fine. You're fine. Just little peek. Holy. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic manner. Today, we are talking about the internal pipes that you never knew were leaking. Hopefully they're not, but it is a growing issue for those who are following and living in accordance to the status quo Western lifestyle, which is a lot of people. And before you ask, I'ma tell you, it is not leaky gut. I know, bummer. And you know I love gut talk as much as anyone else. Although leaky gut is a big issue, we are going to focus the discussion on the once thought impenetrable gatekeeper to our cranial cabinets. You shall not pass! We are talking about the condition known as leaky brain. Yeah. As you probably realize from the sound of it, it's not something that you would call out in your about me. But don't worry, in the next 13 minutes and 51 seconds, pressure's on. I will be taking you through what leaky brain is, why it's a problem, and most importantly, how to put your neuro plumber's hat on, strengthen your blood brain barrier, and seal up any outstanding leaks. I bet you didn't think you were gonna be getting all riled up about a little plumbing today. Welcome to the show. And since I know you're wondering, let's start by diving into what the aforementioned blood brain barrier, BBB, is. But no, no diving head first. Remem remember what we're trying to do here, right? your blood-brain barrier. Just as we talked about in previous videos about your gut epithelial cells being that barrier from the external world to your internal world, wouldn't you know it? We have something similar for the brain. It is called the blood-brain barrier, or BBB for short. And essentially, this is the barrier between your blood cells or capillaries and the cells and other tissue that make up your five pound mushy membrane or brain. You know, where all that important stuff happens, like deciding what's for lunch. Now that you bring that up, production team, yo, what uh, what's on the menu? Great people, great people. Similar to the gut epithelial, this barrier is comprised of endothelial cells that line each and every one of our blood vessels. And for the blood brain barrier, these endothelial cells are wedged very close together, forming tight junctions. And tight junctions equals good. These tight gaps allow only small molecules, fat soluble molecules, and a few select gases to pass freely through those capillary walls and get into the brain. Thus making the blood brain barrier selectively permeable, just like the gut built to allow only what we want it to allow through, just the way we want it. And when it comes to larger molecules like glucose, which the brain needs to, you know, function, special transporter proteins are used, which act as special doors that only open for that specific particular molecule. Pretty cool, right? Now, the key here is that only the good beneficial molecules make their way through. 
and the nefarious or out of place ones get the Heisman. Here's why. Why we need the blood brain barrier. Listen, we're not perfect. We're complex organisms that got a lot going on. Things often get a little messy, but that's why we have our literal OGs from day one supporting us. No, no, not, not you production team. It's like the least thing you do, support me. Our body, it is a flexible, adversity fighting survival machine with all of these elaborate systems in place to protect us from insults in the external and our internal world. And the BBB blood brain barrier is a perfect example of one of these elaborate systems. It is there to protect us from circulating pathogens and toxins that could cause infection while at the same time allowing vital nutrients to reach the brain. Talk about a hard job. And while doing all that, it modulates hormone levels, nutrients, and water in the brain, avoiding disruptions that could easily disrupt this finely tuned environment. Damn brain, no wonder we put crowns on our head and not on our... You know what? I'm, I'm just gonna leave that analogy right here. So what happens when this barrier springs a leak? When your brain leaks? when these cells that comprise this critical entry point become loosened, disjunctioned, and damaged, our blood-brain barrier becomes more porous, allowing larger molecules, potential pathogens, and other toxins infiltrate our brain. Yeah, and guess what this often leads to? The most evil word in all of longevity. I don't even want to say it. And when this happens, one might experience reduced mental ability, difficulty concentrating or multitasking, short and or long-term memory loss and brain fog, brain inflammation and oxidative damage, which can increase the risk of mental conditions. It can also restrict blood flow to the brain causing abnormal brain activities. These are often the symptoms seen in patients with depression and adding insult on top of insult, this can also drive the formation of toxic plaques in the brain, which get sticky and interrupt nerve cell activity and function and is thought to be one of the leading drivers slash causes of neurodegenerative disease. Yeah, we, uh, we want Stop the leaky. Yeah. But before we get there, we kind of got to understand what causes it. What causes the leakage? The following are some identified drivers and accelerators that can make your blood brain barrier more permeable in a bad way. Interestingly, many of these are also the drivers of leaky gut as leaky gut and leaky brain often occur together and have many of these similar root causes. Hmm. So that gut brain thing may be true. So here they are, and I am sure you will not be surprised by a number of the usual suspects. Chronic stress, systemic inflammation, highly processed diet and poor antioxidant status, bacterial infection, elevated glucose and diabetes, environmental toxins, heavy metals, vitamin B deficiency, oxidative stress, autoimmune disease, food additives, rancid oils, chronic sleep issues, ongoing infections, and overuse of antibiotics, and the final dagger, excess alcohol consumption. And listen, we're not gonna sugarcoat it here. Don't, you shouldn't sugarcoat anything, like literally, even though that was just a saying. I gotta work on my, my, my processed food sayings. Uh, we're gonna tell it like it is here. The average person that is walking around on this wonderful planet is battling at the very least one or two of these. More realistically, it's probably three to five or more. So let's assume that we all have at least a few improvements that we can make. I know I certainly can. So what can we do? What you can do. And I like the start slash stop format that we used in the other videos. So uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go with it again. First, what you should stop. Number one, inflammation causing habits. Control and mitigate the following as much as possible. And we have a lot of videos on this channel that describe and touch on a lot of these topics. 
We'll link them all below. Number one, internal and external psychological and emotional stress. Think things such as news and social media. Building a stress management routine for those times where you're starting to go off the deep end is critical. Next, cut down on the highly processed, highly refined foods and the foods that you have sensitivities to. We have videos that we've talked very recently about dedicated to this. What you eat is what you become. So when you're eating highly processed, inflammatory driving foods, that is gonna cause dysfunction in the gut and make its way systemically throughout the body. A Twinkie's not gonna kill you, but a consistent Twinkie multiple times a day over the course of 50 years is an ideal. Also, it's important to get a grip on those environmental toxins inside where you spend most of your time, outside where you interact with the environment, in your food, and in your water. Super, super important as things such as heavy metals can directly impact our blood-brain barrier permeability. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about to stop is excess alcohol consumption. I know, I know, but hear me out. Excess alcohol has been shown to drive blood-brain barrier dysfunction. The high doses of ethanol can actively migrate across the blood-brain barrier and can start to wreak havoc and damage neurons, thus driving an inflammatory response. And you know we do not want an inflammatory response, especially in the brain. With all that, we want to start the following. Number one, start to get your gut health in line. As we previously noted, there is an association between brain health and gut health. So try to eat more prebiotic fiber rich foods. You can also take a high quality probiotic and get your fermented foods in where you can. Next, we want to move more. Why? Because research has shown that exercise diminishes blood brain barrier permeability. It improves endothelial function and capacity, reduces oxidative stress, and has an overarching anti-inflammatory effect on the body. So move. Then eat more real and eat less highly refined, highly processed. This will lower inflammation at the cellular level. It will build up your gut wall and make you feel good. Make sure not to forget your essential fatty acids, which are vital for brain health. You can include avocado, coconut oil, flax seed, hemp seed, oily fish, pumpkin seeds, and walnuts, to name a few. Then we have our blood brain barrier supporting micronutrients, which you can take in supplement format if you please. First, vitamin B12, B6, and B9, which have been shown to improve blood brain barrier function in patients with mild cognitive impairment. Magnesium has also shown to be useful, bringing the ability to attenuate blood brain barrier permeability. So don't forget those foods such as spinach, avocados, and almonds. Then we have garlic. Not only does it keep the vampires away, but it is also packed with rich phytonutrients and antioxidants that help mitigate and reduce the bad blood brain barrier effects that a highly processed, highly refined diet has on it. Curcumin is another good one, the active compound in turmeric, as well as astragalus root, which is found in your cruciferous vegetables, your broccoli, your cabbage, your Brussels sprouts. Next, for sure, a fan favorite, coffee and tea. Both are sources of caffeine, which is a noted blood-brain barrier protector. I, I see you smiling back there. Then we have making sleep a priority. I feel like a broken record each and every week talking about all the things that we can do to improve whatever topic we're talking about and sleep is always one of them. That tells you all you need to know. We have the whole how to sleep playlist, which you know of, but this week's little tidbit of additional sleep information is that restricted deprived sleep impairs blood brain barrier function and makes it more permeable. So yeah, go to bed. Finally, build a stress management routine. Life is stressful, so it is in your best interest to find a way to mitigate and offset it because both acute and chronic hypertension increase blood-brain barrier permeability. So put yourself in the very best position and have a plan when the stress hits because the stress is gonna hit. It always hits when we least expect it or when we expect it, but it hits way too often. Have a plan. Leverage things such as exercise, meditation, breath work, getting outside in nature, singing, dancing, whatever. And that's it. 
That's what I got. At this point, you are all certified brain plumbers equipped with all the tools to patch up and seal all of those neuronal leaks. As always, let me know what comments, questions, any random thoughts you have down below. Now, I just need someone to help me with my actual leaks. Pr pr production team? Can you? What do you guys even do? Guess it's up to me. Catch you next week.